I'm going live. I'm going live on it. As soon as you go live, all you gotta do is just do. I put text me. <laughs> But it's like, you gotta have dual quarter on my uh, uh, on Bison. No, I can go live. I can go live right now on YouTube. Let's go. Just gotta go down. I just go down. I just gotta go down on live. Wait. 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 I'm not going away. I'm not going See, I got zero people. That's on me. I got the. I ain't gonna lie. You got, um. Cause I had swiped it out. It's loading. Y'all, yeah, give me one. Hey. What you? No. You already bit off of these parts. I picked them off, idiot. That's what's the fault. Type a message. <gasps> That's what you guys. Like my stuff. My you? Uh, Jerry, it ain't made me go loud. Here I go. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm calling in these zombies. You the I had X D I mean, yeah, I had Z X Eddie. No, I'm gonna get my sucky person. Look, somebody took something over. It's a little Take 52 damage. What's the 54? I'm already done. And I'm already done because they ain't gonna let me join them no more. We didn't even say that. You only trying to make up stories. We just left the game. You just trying to make somebody feel bad for him. Don't make me feel bad for you. So cool. Hey, I'm on Cafe Hey, See, Annie, you heard that? Yes, it is. Yeah, the golden one is better than that one. Yeah. 
From right there, hi. Amy. You are. I mean, you know, but that's family friendly. Oh, these are real, huh? With any great master value, you have to have a master class. You have to have a master class. Okay, get the closet. I'm in my house. You want me to get the closet? You want me to get the closet? And it's going to have two things in here. It's not the two. A porch and a garage. Hey, hey, do y'all need to put the games up while you train? So going down to two bedrooms. You would go down to two bedrooms. Yeah, Me too. Done with these, I want some more, Amy. Amy please. Um, I think I want to say something say pink lemonade. Okay. It's got It is so pretty. So it's in the other one? It's in the other one. 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 It's in the other one
Yes, ma'am. Is that enough? Perfect sleeper mattress and get the matching box spring for just ten dollars. Plus, select some. Damn it, I found one. Even in the quick summer, it's got to be tough. And this is the only thing you find. The wooden thing for the summer. A rubber treadmill that brings a personal coach to your home. It's like having a boutique. No student endometriosis. Consider the possibility of participating. Follow my endo. Participate in the possibility. Visit my endo. It's happy with the renovation going on at Jeffrey. Make sure there ain't no food in there. Sometimes they'll grandfather something like this in. We're going to have to cut into the floor. The top of the stairs. So what is that going to do with the air conditioning that we don't have? A new HVAC system. I'm not yeah, I know. Does it look like? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I get confused. I still have hope that he can find something that we want. Or as they arrive, Ta-da! Much nicer stairs. Right there is your officer two. And that's because your um, HVAC unit is faster. It looks pretty big. It is big. The bathroom, fitting that, the oh God. These are all things that we agreed to, and these are things I know you don't let me get everything. Yes, it's all. <laughs> and restoring them. Anytime you want to share life's sweetest moments, Nestle told me that. What? You could leave worry behind when Liberty stands with you. Pickups on the road. Which means that Ford F-150s are not. <laughs> Which truck would you be? Mm-hmm. It's the Serta. Hurry into Sam's Club for a hot buy on a top-rated Serta Queen mattress set for just three Results with a weight loss expert and chef crafty food. Lose 16 pounds for $16 plus the cost of food. Hey, hey. Well, I got one more left. So that was a four and a half. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Huh. Hey, you ain't got to get it right now. I'm off to put my phone in the charger. I'm going to get it. I was trying to get it. Make sure you put my phone. No. Yes, no. What's this? Look at how first it's got somebody in here. It's all my shoes. I haven't done it.
with a face on it. Sorry, bro. Hockey stick with a face on it is just cracking me up under the jets, yo. Uh, tell me what about the moose. <laughs> Basketball with a face on it, and I don't get it. Friends, the skull of the pirate volleyball player with a face on it has the concerns for your sanity. <laughs> he has told me talking to inanimate sports equipment with the faces on it is the sign of madness. <sighs> the skull of the pirate volleyball player with a face on it is right! This was crazy happen! This was crazy! This was crazy! Say a wish. Greetings. I am Mr. Rock, your host. Welcome to Crazy Disciple. Mr. Robin, why were you creeping in the bushes like the creepy creeper creep? So I could eavesdrop on you all without being seen. That was super creepy, bro. Even that suit's creepy. It's island style. Good for sitting in bushes. Creep. Wasn't someone trying to make a wish? Yeah. I wish that we were off this club, but... But why would you leave a place that can make your greatest wishes come true? Is he saying this island is magical? That's right. All you need to do is imagine your true desire, and the island will bring it to life. How does that work exactly? Oh, would you like me to spend the next 40 seconds explaining the mechanics of the island's mystical powers? Why, yes! Yes, I would! And this bush right here is the portal for all the magic. Any questions? No? We wish to wish the wishes. Correct! But be warned, the wish may not turn out how you expect it to. You're giving us some mixed signals here, bro. Yeah, should we wish for something or not? Yes, but be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. It really sounds like you're wanting us not to wish for something. Just wish already! Fine, jeez! Hmm. Let's see. Oh, I know. I wish me and my boy Disney were famous musicians. Ah, a wonderful wish. Now, please, step into the bush and let your dream become reality. You want me to go in a freaking bush? It's a magical bush. All right. But I better not get any weird eating cheesy vibes in there. Yeah. Wishes 
to be a kitty cat? Yes, I want with this. Ah, it looks like the little kitty has a hair bone. You see, the life of a good lot is not so easy after all. Wait a second, you're taking another thing out of the way. Indeed, but at first seems like the exciting change has become the very top. 
Hi, everybody. It's 4 o'clock here in Washington. I'm Peter Alexander, and for my friend Nicole Wallace, the president now heading back to the White House from Florida, where for most of the weekend, he stayed off the golf course and on Twitter, arriving Saturday, a stunning multi-day tweet storm ignited by the latest round of indictments in the Russia investigation. As the New York Times writes, quote, President Trump began the weekend believing that something good had just happened to him. An indictment leveled against 13 Russians for interfering with the 2016 election had not accused him or anyone around him of wrongdoing. 
But the president's mood began to darken as it became clearer to him that some commentators were portraying the indictment as nothing for him to celebrate. Those commentators call it proof that he had not won the election on his own. That coverage kicked off a series of false and misleading statements from President Trump defending his victory and denying that he colluded with Russia. Here are some of the highlights. Quote, if it was the goal of Russia to create discord, disruption, and chaos within the U.S., then with all of the committee hearings, investigations, and party hatred, they have succeeded beyond their wildest dreams, he writes. They are laughing their asses off in Moscow. Get smart, America. Then there's perhaps the biggest whopper of the weekend. The president tweeting, I never said Russia did not meddle in the election. I said it may be Russia or China or another country or group, or it may be a 400-pound genius sitting in bed and playing with his computer. President Trump here ignoring the facts, trying to reframe his use of one of his go-to terms, hoax. He wrote, the Russian hoax was that the Trump campaign colluded with Russia. It never did. Trump's tweets spread the blame all over, taking aim at nearly a dozen people and institutions, Democrats in Congress, former President Obama, his own Justice Department, his National Security Advisor, even Oprah this morning. But what his critics found most appalling was this attack on the FBI for missing a tip about the suspected Florida shooter, even as funerals are still being held for the victims. Three more today. The president wrote, very sad that the FBI missed all the many signals sent out by the Florida school shooter. This is not acceptable. They are spending too much time trying to prove Russian collusion with the Trump campaign. There is no collusion. Get back to the basics and make us all proud. Of course, the special counsel's investigation, which is run separately from the main Justice Department and certainly from the FBI's Florida field office, had nothing to do with the missed tip. And it doesn't appear that the president is planning on winding down any of this anytime soon. A new tweet within the last hour blaming his predecessor on this president's day. Quote, Obama was president up to and beyond the 2016 election, so why didn't he do something about Russian meddling? Let's get right to our guest from the New York Times, Michael Schmidt, also an MSNBC analyst. With me on set, Washington Post, White House Bureau Chief and MSNBC analyst, Philip Rucker, Betsy Woodruff, Daily Beast politics reporter and MSNBC analyst. Also, Michael Steele on the end for us today, former spokesman to House Speaker John Boehner and a former senior advisor to Jeb Bush. If I can, Michael, I want to start with you, Michael Schmidt specifically, about the president's latest tweet here. Walk us through this allegation and, in fact, what the Obama administration did or didn't do. I remember that news conference. I was there back in December where the president basically said that he had told Vladimir Putin to cut it out. He warned of consequences if they went further with this. But the president also said, in fact, that his administration was hamstrung to do more on Russia. Yeah, I think the well, what the Obama administration would say is that they were in an incredibly difficult position. If they called out Russia and made a larger issue of it, then the then Trump would have used it against them and said, "Look, this is this is the system is rigged. Look, you're, you know, be playing into Trump's hands." On the other hand, they realized that if they didn't do anything, it would allow maybe the interactions to continue. So they sort of found themselves in this very difficult position, went with the decision to sort of say a little bit publicly, as they did on the same day that the Access Hollywood video came out. Um, and at the, but at that point, there was very little they could do. The emails were already made. Now, this is obviously the president's attempt to sort of divert the attention. The president thought initially that this indictment would be a good thing for him because it does not say anything about his campaign colluding with Russia. But at the same time, he grew increasingly frustrated over the weekend as he saw that the narrative had not gone the way that he thought, that people were saying, well, look, this isn't a hoax. There is really something here. And I think that is the source of frustration that is leading the president to do and tweet the things that he is. And Philip, what strikes me here is in one of those tweets the president says of the FBI, make us proud. The FBI, the Justice Department, Robert Mueller's special counsel investigation, had just determined with authority that Russia meddled in our election and told the world about it. It seemed like for a lot of people, they had just made Americans proud right now. And yet the president's only attack is directed at his predecessor on this day, as well as so many others. That's right, Peter, and more than a dozen tweets over the weekend, and, and the one place where he didn't put any focus was on Russia. He didn't say anything about what the U.S. government might do to try to punish Russia. He didn't say anything about additional sanctions or any other measures, and we know just from following this president over the last 13 months, the administration has really done nothing uh, to try to take Russia to task for what it did in the election. You have reporting from behind the scenes over this weekend, the president didn't play golf. We think he likely played some golf. 
today. He spent several hours in his in his uh, international golf course down there. So what was happening behind the scenes? Who was the president talking to? This sort of Mar-a-Lago kitchen cabinet, as it were. That's right, the Mar-a-Lago kitchen cabinet. He was ensconced at Mar-a-Lago for about 48 hours from Friday night until Sunday night, uh, mostly watching cable television, uh, hanging out with his friends. He was surveying club members about what he might do on gun control. For example, he was also complaining about the Russia coverage. He was watching TV and feeling angry, sort of fuming and stewing uh, over what he was seeing, how it was being portrayed. And he had dinner Saturday night with Geraldo Rivera, the talk show host, uh, who's known to advance a number of conspiracy theories. Let me walk you through, again, one of the president's tweets on this, okay? This is what the president's defense was this week. And sort of trying to reframe this conversation the way that we have the facts to demonstrate simply isn't the case. He wrote, I never said Russia did not meddle in the election. I said, it may be Russia or China or another country or group, or maybe a 400-pound genius sitting in bed and playing with his computer. The Russian hoax was that the Trump campaign colluded with Russia. It never did. So let's play for the audience very quickly what the president did say about this over the course of the last many months. Take a listen. I don't think anybody knows it was Russia that broke into the DNC. She's saying Russia, 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 but I don't, maybe it was. I mean, it could be Russia, but it could also be China. It could also be lots of other people. It also could be somebody sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds, okay? I'm here today is to tell you. The whole Russian thing, that's a ruse. That's a ruse. I believe that President Putin really feels, and he feels strongly, that he did not meddle in our election. What he believes is what he believes. The Russians did not affect the vote. And everybody seems to think that. It's a Democrat hoax that was brought up as an excuse for losing an election. The president is now trying to suggest, well, I was just saying, you know, suggesting that our team colluded was what the hoax is. But on 44 separate occasions in some form, he's used this idea of hoax or witch hunt. And it's clear that he was trying to diminish or discredit this investigation at large and the idea that Russia did this. That's right. The claim the president made in this tweet is obviously on its face incorrect. Part of the reason I think that he's pushed this so hard and for so long is because based on every public statement the president's made, based on every way that he talks about this issue, it's clear that he is not capable of separating this broader question of investigations and the Russian activity in the 2016 election from himself. He can't perhaps make sense of the fact that people would be interested in potential Russian meddling in the American election season for reasons other than trying to politically undercut him or trying to undermine the outcome of the election or suggest that he doesn't deserve to be president. He sees those two separate questions as one and the same thing, and that's why he has to characterize this entire question as just a hoax. And Michael Steele, as some are writing in some of the columnists, you were calling this an egregious moment, frankly, of presidential leadership right now. Say, imagine George H.W. Bush picked up that bullhorn, and he didn't say, we're going to go back, we're going to go get these guys, but he started blaming congressional Democrats or blaming anybody else on American soil, not the people who perpetrated this act against our democratic system. What is the challenge for Republican leaders right now in Congress and, frankly, around this country that even in this moment, we have a vacuum of presidential leadership in calling out the Russians? Well, there's a clear, there's no doubt that President Trump is failing a test of presidential leadership here. And right now, the, his inability to face reality, to face, rationally respond to this investigation, to the facts of what Russia did in the election, is like a black hole that threatens to blot out everything else that he's done and everything else that's happened in Washington. There is a good record to tell here. Tax reform, rising wages, more jobs, ISIS on the run, the individual mandate repeal. That's a record you can run on, but it's not a record you can run on if you're talking about Russia. You know what goes on behind the scenes when you work with Republican leadership. You worked for a long time with House Speaker John Boehner. There's a new Speaker of the House, of course, Paul Ryan. He was with the President yesterday at Mar-a-Lago. If you were advising him, what would you tell him to tell the President behind closed doors? Or do you have any guidance on what that conversation might have sounded like? I think at this point, the House and Senate are going to put their heads down and try to work on what they can work on, get things done for the American people, and ignore as much as possible the president in this issue. Let the bipartisan Senate investigation continue. Let that bipartisan House investigation, to the extent that they remain bipartisan, continue. Do work for the people. Yeah, that's, that's generous to suggest the House Intelligence Committee's investigation is still bipartisan at this point. We'll see if it even exists in some form going forward. Let me hey. ask this to Michael Schmidt if I can. This is another one of the president's tweets, Michael. He wrote, very sad that the FBI missed all the many signals sent out by the reporting. 
and spending too much time trying to prove Russian collusion with the Trump campaign. There is no collusion. Get back to the basics and make us proud. We want to do that. Charger stuff. And Rebecca shared this, but in no time at all they began to feel we're you gonna kill out all to celebrate our reunion. And if it in truth I
Ooh. Oh well, too bad to say I already tried you and it never happened. Okay. Move. Don't don't act like that for your little group, cause I'll move all of them. I just survival, y'all. How you gonna move to? <laughs> Why else stuff pop like that? What? Well, whenever I had hit them, whenever yeah. I hit them, because yeah. it's a light sword. It does it on every dead body. Pop, 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 pop. Okay. Whoa, get back. I have to put a, a slice through his head, boy. Square 
person. She is a different person. She's a vampire. She is like me. I told you that all you really want is a new song. I'm sure you're hurt. It jumps when you hear the songs. You like it? You like it? I'm not. You're true. We were told that she could help. Well, you think, girl? She can find a way to get your clothes. All right. Keep it back down. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about me? Yeah. No, I'm just saying. Yeah. Now we. Oh, why am I talking to you? Jody, where are you at? Why are you behind me? Oh. I slept. Sorry. I hate trying to come over here with you. You know, cross this camp or let up there with uh, when somebody passed away. You gotta cross this count, huh? 1987. In 1980, nigga. I'm talking about like when it was you died, I mean, she was 32. 2019. <laughs> I know, I'm out with me. You know how old she is now? 33. Nope. It's a p she died at 32. Most of us used to go to Christ every time she took us with Walmart. And where else? Huh? Where else, Trady? Walmart. See, smart, come here. Go recording. Yeah, they ain't see. I don't know. I don't know. Biggest hand. So to save your life, which is incredibly annoying. Yeah. I told you I had a less plan. <laughs> Show.
Ah, ah, ah.